Sometimes people will try to stay in that same circle of just broke people that have a broke mindset, that have that poverty mindset. There's nothing wrong with them. We still love them, but you need to get into a new circle because even as you get educated, you might stay in that circle and you'll stay in that circle, you know, and you're the fifth broke person in it because you haven't done anything to change. Knowledge is nothing without action. So we have a mutual friend that says a man is not a financial plan. It's Kara, if you don't know, Kara Ayala. Oh. Um, that, that's a big thing in her world. Why do you think it's important for women to understand like financial literacy? So I was raised by a single mom who, when my dad went to jail, she really just knew one thing, it was to work, right? And just go to work and work all the time so you could pay the bills. Well, it was like you're when you're in that cycle of having to work to make money to pay the bills, and that's like your only option, right? What happens is you're on the rat race of life. Like you just, you're constantly chasing that next thing, that next thing, that next thing. And because you don't feel empowered around the fact that money can work hard for you and that's what it should do. So I'm, you know, really passionate about it because I saw my mom work so hard to have nothing, literally nothing. But what she taught me was so much like work ethic. And so that's why I have that like, like nobody's gonna outwork me, which now I realize is not a badge of honor, right? Because I want like my money to outwork me at this point, right? So there was a lot of like mindset shifting that had to happen there. But you know, like I saw like her marry a man that then couldn't provide for her. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want that in my life. Like, And so I decided to be a nurse because I was like, you know what, I'm always gonna have a stable job. And so that I will always, I'll never not have money to pay the bills and it will just be an easy breezy life. <laughs> and then when I started making money and I was in my early twenties and I met other people, I remember working with doctors who held like real estate properties. And I found out that they like owned the buildings we worked in. And I was like, oh, like that's a thing. Okay. I need to learn about that. And I started to meet like successful people who had a lot of other things, even though they worked their job, their J-O-B, they had a lot of other things that were cash flowing to them. And so my, my ears started to perk up and I'm like, there's something about this lifestyle that I want. And as I started to live out that lifestyle and started to invest all the money I was making, I couldn't not hold it in. Like I couldn't, I had to get it out there to the world and especially to moms. That's how Mommy Millionaire was created was because I had this heart for people to understand like, hey, if you have to ask your husband to buy something, that's financial abuse and that's not okay. And I still hear so many, especially Christians like, oh, but you should always, I'm like, this is like crazy. You're not a child, you're an adult. So if you're in a consensual relationship, like, uh, hello, you shouldn't have to ask to buy things. That's like, literally that drives me absolutely nutty. But I found out like the more and more I've worked with tens of thousands of women that they all have to ask, like even to make a like purchase of a dress. Like they would have to ask for money. And I'm like, this is freaking crazy. Like nothing boils my blood more. And so I wanted to start teaching people, okay, this is how you can make money from home. And that's how I got so passionate about network marketing was because that was something that women could really do from home. It didn't cost them really any money. The stuff I sold, they ate their overhead. So their husband really couldn't say anything. And then as they started to make money, they started to have more choices and more options. And then I need to teach them like, okay, here are all of the things you could do with the money you're making. And so that way you can never be under, you know, somebody's fist. I hate that. So yeah, but I grew up like never thinking a man was a financial plan. Like I was grossed out by men because I had been, the, the men in my life were losers, right? So to me, I'm like, I don't need a man and I'll always be able to take care of myself. And I, I still very much like fight that independent woman mentality. Like as my husband starts to like make money and stuff, I'm like, I still don't need you. And I think it actually helps our relationship be healthy that like we choose each other. I'm not here because I need your money. You're not here because you need my money. Like we're here because we actually love each other and like we want to build the best life together. So yeah, I think you, you, uh, tend to either model what your parents did or you re are repelled by it and you go the exact opposite, which is like what I did. Do you have any advice for, let's say the, the woman who she's intimidated by investing, she's the first person in her circle to try to dive in. Where does she go? You need to get a new circle R right there, right? That's the number one thing to do because sometimes people will try to stay in that same circle of, of 
just broke people that have a broke mindset, that have that poverty mindset. There's nothing wrong with them. We still love them, but you need to get into a new circle because even as you get educated, you might stay in that circle and you'll stay in that circle, you know, and you're the fifth broke person in it because you haven't done anything to change. Knowledge is nothing without action. So change your circle first, get into the rooms where where these people can teach you. They want to teach you. They want to help you rise up and achieve your investing dreams and get educated. Ask them, hey, what are the best books? What are the podcasts you're listening to? Who do you watch on YouTube? And then you're getting educated and you're getting mentored at the same time. And when you hang out with successful people, people that are investing, people that are making deals happen, people that think differently around money, it's contagious. So when you go to take that risk and invest, right? Because people say it's so risky. It's the riskiest thing to not invest in yourself, by the way. Like that's the dumbest thing you could ever do in your life is to not invest in yourself. So you got to hang out with people who regularly invest in themselves. They just understand like a certain percentage of my income every single year is going to go back into me because I am my biggest asset, right? You get into a circle like that, you're just, everybody rises. Cream rises to the top. And I want to hang out with those people who have substance, who have something to give this world, who are committed to impact. So if you're interested and you're just getting started, I mean, it's just like lock arms with people who have gone before you, even if they're just a couple steps ahead of you. It's enough to get them to like breathe life onto your dreams and not blow them out. And when they're first getting started, do you have any kind of rules for percentages of money that they should set aside to like start to put themselves in a good financial situation? Well, I think it's different for every person. Like if you're making income, right? And maybe your expenses are paid for by your husband. And so you could take 100% of your income and you should do something completely opposite of what society tells you to do. Because what society is going to tell you to do is they're going to say, um, you know, put it into a mutual fund, put it into the S&P 500, um, go and, you know, call a financial advisor and da, 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 da. That's what average people do. Okay. If you want to have average results, do what average people do. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying, if you're watching this video right now, it's because there's something inside of you that is attracted to something inside of me. And that's the extraordinary part of you. That's the part of you that knows like if that chick on that other side of that screen can have this life, I can too. So you want those extraordinary results. You've got to take massive action in the opposite direction. Okay. So I would take 100% of your income and learn how to invest it. First of all, you got to take a percentage of that to invest in yourself. You get a mentor. So what are you the most interested in? Is it real estate? Like somebody like my husband, he could care less about real estate. Like I, I get so excited. I could talk about it 100% of the time. And he's like, okay, um, can I watch golf? He, but you talk about hard money lending, then he's like, he could talk about that 100% of the time. So you find your thing that you are the most passionate about, go find a mentor right? So invest maybe up to 10% of your income. You could even do more than that. Okay. You might even do hundred percent. I remember years ago, I had a billionaire on my podcast. I said, I have an extra hundred thousand dollars right now. Where should I invest it? I for sure thought he was going to tell me to buy real estate. And he was like, oh, you need to go find a mentor who has what you want and give them the hundred thousand dollars. And like, I think it was like six months later, I invested $100,000 in myself for the first time to work with a woman that I had I'd never worked with a woman before. And she taught me so much. I mean, she was like brilliant. First of all, just to charge six figures to work with her was like an invitation to me that I could do that too. So anyways, he changed my life because that trajectory has changed everything for me. That just one piece of advice, oh, 100% of it put it into you. I'm like, whoa, I'm worth that much. Okay. And now the money I've made from that investment is like, I mean, it's going to be endless, right? So spend enough on yourself so that way you feel confident. You know, if you need to get a new wardrobe to make yourself feel better about like, do that. Like those are all things that women like don't give themselves permission to do, do it because you should feel fabulous as you walk around and create the life of your dreams. Now don't spend a hundred percent of it. Okay. All right. Maybe like two to 3%, <laughs> whatever that looks like. So that's what I would do. And then I always say 25%. Take 25% of that and put that into an investment account and put it into a high yield savings account until you can figure out what you want to do with it. Okay, so it's making at least, you know, a little bit of money. And then uh, make sure that you diversify your income. So if I only had $100,000, again, I'm going to invest $10,000 into myself. 
maybe more if you need to, uh, then I'm going to maybe buy some clothes, do some things that make me feel good about myself. What equipment do I need to go to that next level? So is there software I need? Is there um, something I can do to elevate my brand? Doing videos like this, like I need to invest back into that business, that that personal brand that I own because everybody is a walking personal brand, okay? So that's super important. And then 25%, 25,000 of that is gonna go into an investment account in case a deal comes my way. Like to get into Chase and I, we also have a cash advance syndication fund. Minimum is 25,000 to go into that. So it's good to be able to have at least that much stocked away because an opportunity, most most opportunities, there's gonna be a minimum investment of like 100 grand, but some you might be able to get into for as little as 25. So just start that little nest egg over there. Um, and then learn about other things, like learn to be a private money lender. Find those people that are investors that have a track record of success that you might be able to loan your money to at an eight to 10% rate and get that money to start working for you. So there's a lot of things that you could do in the beginning to start learning, but the biggest thing is to get into the rooms of the right people who will teach you what to do with that money. 